Okay, now I'm better. I've had an interesting day, guys. <sighs> I'm just not sitting down after dealing with all that shit. As you guys know, I res I <clears throat> I've been getting a lot of the Hero Zukuri blades from Muatoshi. They cut like lightsabers, guys. My only issue with them is they're cheap, flimsy, and very whippy. What I mean by that is if you're holding the the sword like this and you go side to side, this is how it's gonna do. It's gonna flip flop back and forth because it's so thin and flimsy. Pardon me again. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's been like that today. All right. So I've sat here pretty much about eight hours waiting for FedEx. Okay. Let me turn that light on. So I've been sitting here all day because the last time I got a sword from from uh, Sword and Army, it was the Black Yuki. And I woke up at like 11 o'clock. I was here at noon. Cool. No problem. Today I get up at like nine in the morning. It's like okay, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get the the apartment clean. I keep saying house, but it's an apartment. I'm gonna get the apartment clean, do my laundry, all that stuff. So get up, start cleaning up the house, do the laundry, do the dishes, do the vacuuming, clean up doors, fiasco in the hallway. That's where all her food and litter box is. No FedEx. Okay, let me just double check the tracking number. On vehicle, out for delivery. Okay. Noon comes, you know, noon comes, no FedEx. 1 p.m. comes, no FedEx. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I started getting a little irritated. Because I remember a couple of years ago, I, I ordered a PS4 online. And uh, I sat, I had it sent to my parents' house instead of being here because it was so expensive. And, uh, so I go to my parents' house, and I'm sitting there all day long on the porch, rocking in the old rocker. No FedEx. I keep checking the uh, tracking. Out for delivery. Out for delivery. At like 8.01, I check it again. It's updated. It said something along the lines of, uh knock no answer or you know no response or something or attempt made or whatever and it had like a little red flag type thing going with it i'm like i've been sitting here all day playing on my phone doing this looking for the damn truck never shows up call them up cuss them out well, it'll be at least two more days or some kind of shit like that. So I go over there again the next day. Looking around, looking around. No truck. Finally, we have to call. I don't know who my dad called because I was fed up with him. My dad gets on the phone with somebody and he's raising hell. Because he's, he, he sees how pissed off I am. I can't even talk on the phone, I'm so mad. So he gets on there and says whatever he says. And... Like, I see the FedEx truck drive by, and I, I turn, I, I was going home, and then I see them drive by, and then I turn around, and I go back to their house. So, I get the PS4. I, after, like, three or four days of just fighting and just begging them to do their job, just bring the shit to my house, right? So, I was kind of thinking I was going to go through that shit with this. Uh, luckily, I didn't. You know, I... I I heard the guy pull up. You, can, you can't miss a UPS or a FedEx truck. They had those squeaking brakes and they drive like a fucking maniac. He wasn't even parked. He was just, he pulled in and just stopped, you know, in front of my unit. So, you, I mean, the guy was probably overburdened, so it probably wasn't his fault. But in the future, I will not use FedEx if I can avoid it. And if any of you want to send me your swords for sharpening, please do not send FedEx. You have no guarantee. I'll, I'll, I will ever even get the sword, you know. It may up it may end up in Ken's gazebo somewhere. Uh, have Ken out there and his flip flops burping wondering what the hell is this sword doing in my gazebo? Anyway. 
<laughs> I love you, buddy. Anyway, I'm done rambling. I talk shit for five minutes. I'll do the sword review. The wait was worth it. And I paid for two days shipping through FedEx. My own dumbass fault. But I came across a 5% coupon code online. Dropped it in there and saved 5%. It was like, I don't know, like, I can't remember, it was like $10, I say. I can't remember what it was. So I was like, okay, I'll just put that toward the shipping. So here, here she is in all her beauty. And I will do a better video with the, the, the rear camera. This is my selfie camera I got going. I'll put it on the table, you know, and I'll get like a close up of everything. But for now, it, you know, the Saya is your classic Minotoshi piano finish Saya. Of course, the Sege was tight. It's high quality. It's not that shoestring cotton, okay? Tied really tight, very even, you know, no fraying, anything like that. No dents or scratches in the side. I can feel the side. Um, the blade is amazing on this piece. Uh, when I got it, it was sharp. Not razor, not Seth sharp, but sharp. You know, it would cut mats. It would cut bottles, but not like it will now. I'll get that in a second. First thing I noticed about this piece online was the Suba. I have a thing for Ravens, and I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, if you look at the Suba, it looks like feathers, almost like crow or raven feathers. So, yes, I have nicknamed this the Raven, my favorite animal of all time. I even kind of toss around the idea of using Raven as my screen name, but yeah. You know, unlike the Yuki's, this blade came out perfectly. There was no lumpiness in the blade. If you take your finger carefully, you know, put it inside of a towel and then like go across the blade of the Yuki, it feels like this because there's the metal's like lumpy, okay? This one is perfect, smooth as a woman's butt, okay? Uh, this one handled my sharpening very well. Usually there's a line that appears, and I guess it's just the, the kind of steel it is. You can't hardly see the line to where I taped it off. Uh, the Ito is basically the same Ito as on the Viper, but it to me it feels better. The handle, the Ska, to me feels different than the Viper. It's like it's grippier, it's a little bit thicker. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long the sky is, or suka, or handle, or whatever the hell you want to call it, pommel, or whatever. But it's long enough for me. You know, it, it'll it'll serve my needs. I just keep looking at that suit, but that is just beautiful to me. And it probably isn't feathers, but to me, that's what it looks like. So it's gonna be called the Raven. For those of you who don't like to name your production pieces, that's your call. This is my sword, bought with my money. Uh. Seppas don't do uh, do not move. Habaki does not move. There's like some scuffing right there. I, I'm probably just gonna leave that alone. Um, I don't want to use any anything on it that I don't have to. Uh, I have not cut with it yet since it came so damn late. Thank you, FedEx. Okay, I'm done bitching about FedEx. So tomorrow, with if the weather permits, I will take. Probably one of my new stands that uh, I made out of, uh, or I put together, I assembled out of, you know, some 4x4s and some um, some Christmas tree stands. Ken had a very good idea. I'm going to veer off topic for a little bit. The reason I like the Christmas tree stand, the little round thing, is because, one thing, it's probably just me, but I feel like I'm going to trip over those damn stands where it has the feet, like, you know, way out to here, they're all crossed over or whatever. It's just, I feel like I'm gonna just trip and just bust my ass and like cut my throat on those damn things. But with the tree stands, you can get really close to the stand, you know, because it, it's kind of made like this, you know. This is over-exaggerated, but this is the tree stand and this is the, the, the wood part. You can get right up on it, you know, and do whatever you gotta do. It's perfect. Ken, thank you for that. Plus, like he said, once the, you know, once your wood once your wood wears out, <laughs> you could just undo the screws. Come on, Ken, let me have it. The screws. Yeah. Okay. You can just 
untie, you know, un loosen up the screws and just change the, the 4x4 and you can just keep the stand forever. You know, because those things are pretty durable. You know, I put them, I put them together and I kind of did a little bump test and if, you know, if you hit the stand, it's going to wobble. But if you're actually hitting the target, I don't think it's going to make any difference. But anyway, great idea, buddy. Thank you for that. Uh, as I said, this is the Hiro Zukuri, Zukuri Munatoshi. There's only one like this that is not considered a Samgakta because if you look at the blade, it's katana width as far as this way. But you look at the spine, it's thick right there. And, but it, it goes into the really thin geometry. There's no shinogi, there's no niku on it. So all the strength in the meat is in the spine, or the, or the mune. What the hell was that? Uh, somebody commented on my post. Uh, what is that? The tracking so Okay, somebody commented on my post by FedEx. Um, I'm writing this is steel, as is all the uh, other fittings. One thing I want to comment on is the Ito. We've all got swords that have black Ito, but this thing is like a rich, deep, just deep black, you know. I'm sure it'll fade, but the way it is now, you know, I really like that. Uh, I don't know if the Simon is real, I really don't care about that. This isn't a showpiece piece. Uh, the Makugis are nice and flush with the, the Samigawa. Uh, the Manukis look like some kind of feathers. It might be feathers, I really don't know. Uh, John, if you're watching or whoever, you know, let me know because that is interesting. I don't know, I still calling it the Raven, I don't give a shit. Um, anyway, uh, let's see, where was I? There is no uh, Yokote, fake or otherwise. But anyway, as I was saying, uh, here is a Kuri geometry, which means it's katana width here, but it's also the Samgato width here, which I believe this thing is going to be a static machine, guys, because of the way the, the geometry is. But as far as the durability, um, it this is how I would explain how it feels. It feels like it's light enough to do any trick that you want, but it has enough girth or solidness to it, that's a word, or, you know, enough reinforcement to, to handle a mistake or handle, I would cut bamboo with it, but to Tommy, yeah, you know, I think it would, it would handle it pretty well. Um, as far as maybe self-defense, it you know, I don't think it would chip on cutting into someone if that's what you want to go for. Um, hard targets, I would stay away from. But I think it could handle any kind of water bottle or plastic bottle. Uh, I don't know, it's spring still, so it might actually handle bamboo. I don't know, John's the one that always tests all the bamboo, so I'll, I'll wait for him. It does sound on the site to never use this for hard targets, but... That may just be them being conservative about it. Who knows? I know what you guys want to see. You want to see how sharp I got it. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, yeah. You guys want me to try for a record of you. You sick bastards. Alright, I... Ever since I started trying for those, I always screw them up. It's not the blade, it's me. There we go, curly cue sliver. Uh, push test to wrap it up. Well, don't bend it, stupid. I always fuck that up at the end. I, I really don't want to cut my hand. You can see where I always curve off. It's not the sword, it's me. Hair popping, eye popping, hair shaving. I just keep looking at that damn Suba. That is just so cool. So awesome. So I can get a better shot of it. Hmm. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to 
do a separate video where I just I'm highlighting the sword. Great piece. I love it. Um, decent amount of story or curvature. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want a trick cutter and something that's a definite step up from the Yuki's, uh, check out the Hirozukuri by Munatoshi. It's the only one that's in katana style. This is not a Samgakdo or a Gundo. This is actually a katana with, with Hirozukuri. <laughs> I don't have a hard time saying that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's great. Same steel as the Viper. And probably is durable. To be honest, just, just to be honest about something real quick. Even though the, the Yuki's are advertised as fragile, I got really pissed off at, at the black one I got. I am. I mean, it was a cut I was trying to make. I got really fucking mad, and I turned it over with the spine, and I hit this the top of this thing as hard as I freaking could. Not that I would say you should do that, but put a big dent in the stand. It was in there, and uh, but the sword never come loose. It never didn't shatter. It didn't break. It didn't bend. It just you know whatever. I'm not saying that you should do it. I'm just saying it survived it. You know, if you want to worry about how durable these things are. Uh, yeah, I'm very pleased. Aside from my FedEx experience today, which could have been worse. could have been, you know, the PS4 fiasco all over again. But, uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, the Hirozukuri Munatoshi 1075 Spring Steel, which I have nicknamed the Raven. Hope you guys enjoy. Safe cutting. Maybe I can get outside tomorrow, take a trip to Byron, see my parents, do, get some cutting, and test this bad boy out. You guys have a great one. In case I don't see you, Happy New Year's. And, uh, Curtis Liver. Say my name. Y'all have a great one.